This is lesson 4.1, the first unit of the quadratic equations unit. We've just finished two units on algebra for quadratic equations, so that was factoring and expanding, and also what do parabolas look like, that's the graph of the quadratic equation in the quadratic relations unit. So what we're going to be doing in our final quadratics unit is putting all of that information together. So you will need all of those concepts to be able to complete this unit. We're going to start by reviewing the three forms of the quadratic equation. The first one is the vertex form. This is where we did a lot of the graphing from. So we have our stretch factor, we have our horizontal shift left or right, and we have our vertical shift up and, up and down. So we've used this mostly to graph from. You should be very confident about graphing from vertex form. And indeed, the key point from vertex form, the reason it has its name, is that we can actually read the vertex x and y values right out of the equation. The next type of form of the quadratic equation we have is the standard form. And you saw this in our algebra unit. This is the fully expanded version where we have three terms, a trinomial with the highest exponent being a two. So this is the quadratic formula in standard form. And the key piece of information we get from this is the y-intercept. So if it's a y-intercept, our x value is zero and c, the number at the very end, the constant, is our y-intercept. And finally, the factored form is the last one that we know of. We can also call this the x-intercept form. And the reason it has its name is because of that. We can read the x-intercepts right out of the equation. We also call x-intercepts roots or zeros. So all of these terms are interchangeable. Because these are, are x values, they're horizontal, when we pull them out of the equation into the coordinate points, they do have the opposite sign, just like they did when we pulled this horizontal shift out for the vertex here. So negative r in the equation becomes positive r as the x-intercept. Negative s in the equation becomes positive s in the coordinate point. Because we're going to be needing each of these different pieces of information, the vertex, the y-intercept, and the x-intercepts, we're going to need to be able to convert between the different forms so that we can easily pick out those key points. So the first thing we're going to do is look at, okay, I have vertex form. We should be very comfortable with that. How do I figure out the y-intercept? So I can go from the vertex into the standard form by simply using bed mass. We call this expanding and simplifying. So we have just changed from vertex into standard. If I keep going around my triangle, the next form I need to have is my factored form. So we spent a whole unit on this. It was the algebra unit or quadratic expressions. And all we go do to go from standard into factored is, you guessed it, just factor. You should look at the individual questions to know if you need to. Common factor, simple trinomial, complex trinomial, perfect squares, difference of squares, any of those tools we have already learned, you're going to have to put into play here. The final step around this triangle is to go from factored form into vertex form. And what we're going to be looking at is how to take our x-intercepts. We know that those are crossing the x-axis. So if a parabola is symmetrical, we can just find the middle of these two points to figure out where our axis of symmetry is, which is the horizontal value of the vertex. So we are going to be doing that today. If we go back the other way around the triangle, start at vertex, you will notice there is no arrow going back into factored form. There's no quick tool or fast way to do this. We would in fact have to go all the way around to expand and simplify and then factor to get this way. So there's no way to do that. However, we can go from factor to standard quite easily, and we practice this a ton in that unit with the factoring, and this is just expand. Okay, so we're going to expand and simplify to get to standard form. And then the last step that we have on this triangle is to go from standard into vertex. And there is a nice quick tool for that, which you're going to learn tomorrow, completing the square. So for the time being, until you know that arrow, you're just going to go from standard, factor it, find the vertex back this way. It's sort of a pain in the butt, but you will learn this nice quick way tomorrow. Let's look at two examples of how to use this triangle to convert between the different forms of the quadratic equation. Example one, 
find the factored form and x-intercepts for the parabola here. We should first notice that this is in vertex form. And if we're trying to find the factored form, we are going to be given the x-intercepts directly. So this is kind of two, the same question in two different ways. We have to state the factored form and then pull the x-intercepts out of that and state them clearly at the end. So to go from vertex form into factored form, we actually have to go from factored and expand it into standard and then factor it into factored form. So here's how this is going to look. Again, it starts out with simply bed mass. So follow clearly the bed mass steps. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the brackets. And there is nothing inside of the brackets that I can simplify. So B is done. Next is exponents. So I do have a squared there. Please, please, please remember, I can't just take the two and square the things inside. This is actually a perfect square trinomial. It's x minus two times x minus two. It's two brackets of the same. So there are, the, the quick way to do this is to use your perfect square trinomial um, shortcut. But if you need to, if you quickly need to remember, oh yeah, that just means two of the same bracket twice. Now I hope you don't have to write that out in the use foil, that you can go straight to this one. Well, x times x is x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 2. Now, if you remember, that was the a minus b squared is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. That's just that shortcut for a perfect square trinomial. So you are welcome to go straight to that when you go into this step here. Okay? Uh, so that's the exponents. We've done brackets, exponents. Next is multiply, divide. So we're going to take that 2 and distribute it into the bracket. And then finally, we have adding and subtracting. And this is just collecting like terms because I have two constants and I can write them together. So I went from vertex form here and converted it into standard form. But I'm not finished because the question asks me for the factored form and to tell him tell the x-intercepts. So I need to keep going and go from standard form into factored, and that's simply factoring. When I first look at this question, I should notice, okay, it's got three terms, so what are my tools if my question has three terms? This could be um, simple trinomial, complex trinomial, perfect square. So first thing I always check for in a factoring question is for common factoring. So yes, I can divide all of these by two. So if I common factor it, what I thought could have been a complex trinomial, because there's a number at the beginning, turns out to just be common factoring and a simple trinomial. So always check for common factoring. So simple factoring says, what are two numbers that multiply to three and add to negative four? So if I go through, well, three is a prime number, so the only options are one and three, but one plus three doesn't give me negative four, but negative three times negative one gives me positive three, negative three minus one does give me negative four. So my two brackets are x minus three, x minus one, and then just double check it in your head once you write it, negative three times negative one, oh, that does multiply to positive three, negative three minus one does add to negative four. So that's it. That is my factored form. So this one question walked us through all three of the forms. So that is my final answer for this part of the question that says find the factored form. Well, there it is, I've just labeled it. So my final therefore statement, I'm going to clearly state what the x-intercepts are. So therefore, the x-intercepts, or you could say roots, or you could say zeros. And don't forget that when I pull these out, this is minus r and minus s, but my brackets are positives. These are horizontal values, so they are opposite what you think they should be. So 3, 0, took the opposite sign of this one, 
and one zero. Okay, so this is how to convert from vertex into standard into factored. The last example here is asking for the vertex when we are given an equation in standard form. So if you think back to that triangle, I didn't, my arrow to go here was actually to find the middle of the x-intercepts. So I'm going to have to convert it into factored form first to figure out my x-intercepts. So let's do that. So firstly, I notice in this question that I can common factor. So I'm always going to start there. So I can common factor out the two. And now I have a simple trinomial, which I can factor. What are two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2? Okay, well, that's going to be negative 5 plus 3. So x minus 5, x plus 3. Whenever you write these, just do a quick double check in your head. Negative 5 times positive 3 is negative 15. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Okay, great. So that means that were I to graph this just on an x number line, I would have my x-intercepts be 5, 0, and negative 3, 0. So let's imagine this. Negative 3 is here, 2, 1, here's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here are my two x-intercepts, and here is the y-axis. So for this part, I'm trying to find the axis of symmetry of my parabola. And I know that the axis of symmetry is right in the middle because that's the line I can cut and my vertex, my parabola looks exactly the same on both sides. So I can think about it like this and say, okay, I'm going to go one in this way, one in, where's the middle? There's three on both sides. There's four on both sides. So this at one is going to be right in the center because that's four from this side and four from that side. So that's one way to just think about it. Okay, what's the middle of those two? Oh, it's, it's one. But really, that's an average calculation. So if I want to find the average between negative three and five, I would just add them together and divide by two, because that's the middle. Like if you get 50% on one test and 100% on the other, the middle of it is 75. That's your average. That's exactly what we're doing here. So if you prefer to write it out in um, algebraic form, this is how we would write it. So I'm trying to find the x value of the vertex. And what I'm trying to find is my first x-intercept plus my second x-intercept divided by 2. Right? I have two numbers. I add them together, 50 and 100, and I divide them by 2. So to find the x value of the vertex, I've got negative 3 plus 5 over 2. Well, that's 2 over 2, which gives me 1. So that's the x value of the vertex is 1. So I'm sort of halfway there because to find the vertex, I need the x value and the y value. What I can do is take this x value and plug it back in to what I know, either this equation or that equation, it's up to you, and figure out my y value of the vertex. So let's do that. I'm going to use the one that was printed for me on the page because if I made a mistake here, I'm just kind of reinforcing that. So I always like to go back to what's printed on the page. But I'm going to sub x equals 1 into that equation. So y equals 2, 1 squared, minus 4 times 1, minus 30. So I put that in my calculator, or I can just do it in my head, right? 1 times 1 is 1. So it's going to be 2 minus 4 minus 30. So y is equal to negative 32. So here is the y value of my vertex and the x value of my vertex. So I can put those two things together. Say, therefore, the vertex is 1, negative 32. So if I go back to my graph up here, I know here are two points that I have for my graph. And if I went down, all the way down to negative 32, I could put my vertex there, and then I could join my dots to make a parabola graph. This, only, this question only asks for the, what state the vertex. 
I could also put this together into an equation and it's not that tricky. I just need to remember that whatever the A value is in every single form is going to be the same in my vertex form. So I have A, I have H, sorry, H here for the X value and K is my Y value. So Y equals the same A, which is two, and then it's X minus H. So if my vertex is positive one here, it's X minus H. So it's gonna be X minus one, all squared, minus 32. So that's the equation in three forms. I've got my standard form, I've got my factored form, and I've got my vertex form. Download the worksheet so you can practice this for yourself. The answers will be posted to check your work, or if you get stuck, you can give yourself a hint. And there are just a few Khan Academy questions assigned so we can see how you're doing. Good luck.